Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.1. In this video I'm going to cover different ways of doing transitions and different approaches to doing animations within Twine.1 using Harlow 2.0. So within Harlow there, there's a macro called Transition that naturally handles different versions of transitions for how hooks appear. Its options are kind of limited though, so right now the options are Pulse, Dissolve, and Shutter. So let's show an example here of Pulse. We see the, the word pulse, pulsed. Uh, and then we can change the normal time, which is 0 0.8 seconds, uh, using transition time. Notice the hyphen between them. And we add it to transition, just like we were chaining different macros together. And I'll show you when we get back to the source here. But we can create a longer pulse. Longer pulse, 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 pulse. And it finally stops. But like I said, using transition and transition time doesn't give us a lot of options. We have pulse, we have dissolve, and we have shutter, and uh, that's kind of it at the moment. So there might be a way to approach transitions and animations using different versions of timing. We see counting down from 2, 1, 0, rockets away. So starting with Twine 2.0. There was also the introduction of the live and the stop macros to create timed loops. And as you'll see when I come back to the code, we can combine those with some variables to allow us to do loops, do times within those loops, and then stop them based on different conditions using live and stop. So okay, so we have transition, if we want pulse or shutter or dissolve, as well as we have some different ways of creating timed loops using live and stop. What if we wanted timing and movement? How would we go about that? So using the previous timing loops, as well as with the CSS macro, we can move things using their CSS position over time. And you notice the word moving is moving until it's done. And so that cycle of timed loops stopped. You can also make it infinite if you want, uh, depending on how you change the numbers. But as you can see, and I'll jump back to this so we can run it again, moving moves. Using timed loops, as well as with the CSS macro, and it'll make a little more sense when we look at the code here in a moment. And we can move things, creating an animation effect of something moving over time using the timed loops. What if we wanted different colors and things? Well, we could also do that in Twine using CSS or textiles or a number of different approaches to that background color macros. But we can also do it animations using CSS3, using keyframes. Now this is a little more complicated and it's not as well supported in different browsers, but if we want to, we can use keyframes within CSS3, and I'll show the code to do this, to create animations of different CSS effects. And in this case, we see it's sort of fading between different colors here. We have red, and we have a yellow, and then we have red, and it's fading back and forth based on a timing here. So in the same way we created timing loops within Twine, we can create timing loops within CSS. But again, it's not as well supported, so you sort of have to take that into consideration about what you, where you're using that. However, we can put all of these things together if we want. We can use CSS3 keyframes. We can use the timing loop and the, the moving. And we can have something that both has animation based on CSS3, as well as has a moving based on the time loops and the CSS macro. And here's an example of that. Something is moving and animating. So it's changing color, as well as moving, changing, moving, changing, moving, changing. And stop. And it's done. So let's look at the code for that. So with the start passage, we're using the transition macro and one of its three options. In this case, pulse, right here. So we have transition, the word pulse, for that type of transition, and then a hook, and then some type of content within that hook. In this case, the content within the hook is the word pulse, and we pulse pulsed. We also tra change the transition time using the transition time macro added to the transition macro, just like we would normally chain other macros. And so we have transition pulse plus transition hyphen time 
changed it to 5 seconds instead of the normal 0 0.8. And then we saw the transition with a, had a longer pulse. We changed the timing of the pulse transition. Moving over to the timing passage, we see the use of live and stop macros. So the very first thing we're doing is setting some type of value we're going to check. In this case, stop cycle to 4. We say live one second, and so this loops every one second. And the very next thing we do within that is we check to see if stop cycle is zero. This allows us to, and in this case we want to, stop the timed cycle when it reaches a certain number or under a certain condition. In this case, if stop cycle is ever zero. So it starts at four, goes into the loop, and if it ever becomes zero, show rockets away and stop. And when the stop macro is inside a live macro, it kills all of it, stops the timing. Else, so if stop cycle is not zero, keep going. In this case, set stop cycle to itself, it minus one. So it starts at four and counts down. So we saw four, three, two, one, zero, and then rockets away. We also saw the number each time, so counting down from, and then the value of the variable stop cycle within the cycle itself. So every loop started one second, one second, one second, one second, one second. Within those, it checked to see if stop cycle was ever zero, and if it was, it went ahead and stopped everything and showed rockets away. But if it wasn't, which is what we saw, it counted down for us, showing the value each time. Now going into our timing and movement passage, we see the same code, this time expanded so it's a little cleaner to view each step. So we're setting, moving into live, testing the condition within the if macro, moving over to the else macro, in this case changing the value, this time adding to it, which I'll go back to in just a second, and now we're using the CSS macro. Now within the documentation for Harlow, it sort of warns that the CSS macro was sort of a last, a last stop or last resort for something, and I agree with that as well. This time, though, when we're using it, we're changing the position to absolute within the CSS, and then changing its left position to the value of the string result of 20 times the stop cycle. Now the reason we're doing that is because right above this, we're only changing stop cycle by one each time. And that's not a very noticeable change within a pixel. I mean, one pixel at a time is not very noticeable. So we're multiplying that by 20. So you're actually seeing 20 pixel change each time, which is why I'm moving moved from the left farther to the right as the value increase, as stop cycle increased uh, proportional to multiplied by 20 each time. But you saw it move. And of course, we're setting pixel as, as the unit. So position absolute and then left as it starts starts at 0 immediately moves to 1 and then we have 20, 40, 80, etc. up to a total of 10. And so it moves 20 pixels at a time from left to right because we're increasing the value of the left here from left to right moving 20 pixels at a time. And we can then create a moving effect using the CSS macro and the timed loops, each time changing the CSS of a hook, which is what we're doing right here. Now moving into CSS3 animations, all we do, because it's CSS, is set a class. In this case, this, the class is red yellow and then some content within an element. Now let's go look at the CSS. Now to look at the style sheet information within a Twine story, we click on the name and we go to Edit Story Style Sheet. And in this case, I have an example here where the name of the keyframes, which is the name of the animation, is example, which is pretty straightforward, and a from and a to. Now there are a number of different things within keyframes and, and different variants depending on the browser, but the more accepted of them is the from and the to. In this case, from, and then some type of CSS styles within that, so background color is red, to background color is yellow. And so the keyframes change from and then to, to. So it changes from and to, from and to. 
And so now we actually have down here the new style rules for the class red yellow. So we're setting the padding to uh, one uh, font unit, so it just has a little extra padding there. Starting with the background color of red, so it starts with red and then moves to yellow. And then we say, okay, within this class, use the animation name example, which matches the keyframes example, so it uses this one. The duration of the animation should be four seconds. So every four seconds move from two, from two, from two, every four seconds. An iteration count, which could be a number here, but in this case is infinite. So just keep on going. So every four seconds, use the animation name example. So this one right here and change the background color from red to yellow. So red to yellow every four seconds for infinite amount of iterations based only on CSS right here. Now again, it's not always supported in every browser, so sort of be careful uh, where you use it and be aware that it may not always be supported. So finally, we can put all of these things together, if we really want to, where instead of moving the wording moving, we can actually move an element with the class red-yellow using all of the previous code. So we set up a timing cycle using live macro, set it to one second. We're going up to 10 times. We're adding one to stop cycle every time and we're moving left to right 20 pixels at a time by multiplying 20 times stop cycle, which is one, and setting it to the value left of the CSS position that's absolute. So when it first appears, and then it moves left to right 20 pixels at a time. Now using these different macros, starting with transition as I covered within Harlow, as well as different ways of approaching timing, timing and movement, CSS3 animations, which could also be used with Entwine as with color macro, the background macro, the text style macros, depending on what you wanted to do. And again, consult the documentation for this. We can put it all together in different ways here and create transition and animation effects using the timing, the live, and the stop macros, as well as numerous other macros, or if we get a little fancy with it and a little more uh, uh, testing with it, using CSS3 animations as well. So you have a number of different approaches of using transitions and animations, using live macros and transition macros and timing macros and CSS3 keyframes if you'd really like to, and we can put it all together in different ways. But we can do all this to create a number of different effects within Twine 2.1 using Harlow 2.0 uh, for transitions and animations. Thanks for watching.